Hi guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 23, the U-R-E ending. Please take a second to gather your materials. You will need your purple book open to page 143. You'll also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever I mark on my board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key as well. You'll notice I've already gone ahead and broken our words into syllables using those orange vertical lines, and I've placed pink check marks above the stressed syllable in each word. Remember, that's the part of the word that we say a little bit louder and stronger. If you'd like to pause the video right now to add your own markings, feel free to do that. All right, for several weeks now, we have been talking about derivational suffixes. We know that these are groups of letters that we tack on to the end of a word to change its part of speech. On last week's list, all of our words ended with T-U-R-E. And we noticed in many cases, a word started as a verb and changed to a noun. So for instance, we took a word like depart and changed it to departure. Well, we're gonna see the same thing this week. Once again, all of our words end with U-R-E, with that er or or sound, uh, but none of them have a T preceding that U-R-E. Sometimes we have an X, sometimes we have a G, sometimes we have a different letter. Now, our words this week are a real mix of nouns, verbs, and adjectives. However, you will see that several of our words this week, just like last week, can start as a verb and change to a noun when that U-R-E ending is added. We'll talk more about that in a second. But first, let's read our list. Please repeat after me. Assure, closure, composure, configure, disfigure, displeasure, enclosure, endure, exposure, insecure, leisure, manicure, manure, pedicure, pressure, procedure, reassure, secure, seizure, unsure. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is that S that shows up in so many of our words. That S makes two different sounds. Sometimes it says sh in words like a sure. And sometimes it says zh in words like closure. Now sh and zh are formed exactly the same in our mouths, except with sh, our voice is turned off. With zh, our voice is turned on, okay? This is probably something you haven't thought about in a long time, but we have in our language several um, sound pairs where we can make the same sound with our voice on or off. So for instance, b and p, the b and the p, exactly the same, one has voice on, one has voice off. So what I want to do right now is quickly go through and look for examples where our voice is turned off. So that would be in a word like a sure, where the S makes a sh sound. Um, in closure, I'm going to take out my green because closure, our voice is on. And we make more of a zh sound, more like a z. Composure, we also turn our voice on. Displeasure, voice on. Enclosure, voice on. Exposure, voice on. Leisure, voice on. Again, we're making that zh sound. Pressure, voice off. We're back to that 
sh, sh sound. Uh, reassure our voice is off again. And unsure our voice is off again. So you can see it's a real mix. We have four words where we keep our voice off. Assure, pressure, reassure, unsure. And then six words where our voice is turned back on. Closure, composure, displeasure, enclosure, exposure, and leisure. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about is that derivational suffix. So I told you that several of our words this week can start as a verb. So think about the word closure. Closure is a noun. Okay, so when something really tragic or sad happens in your life, you look for closure. You look for a way for that pain to end, right? Um, so the verb hiding in there is the word close. Okay, so for instance, let's say a soldier was fighting abroad. Maybe this was somebody fighting during World War II or the Vietnam War. And they disappeared and their family back home never found out what happened to them. Their family would grieve for a long time and they would also be looking for closure, right? They want to see the person's body or they want to find out what happens. They want to be able to bury him, right? So they're looking for a way to close that painful chapter in their life. So close becomes closure. Now composure also has a verb hiding in it because we have the verb compose, right? You can compose a song, you can compose um, a play, but you can also compose yourself, right? When you compose yourself, you like calm down, stop crying, you know, you relax yourself. You present yourself with composure. Okay, composure meaning like um, a sense of calm. So that comes from the verb compose. Now notice because our suffix starts with a vowel, U-R-E, we have to drop that E before we add our ending. You guys are used to this. Way back in first grade, you learned that you had to drop the silent E whenever you added a vowel suffix like ED or ING. U-R-E is no different. All right, um, displeasure. What's the verb hiding in there? Yeah, displease, right? If you displease your parents, let's say you show them your report card and there are a lot of bad grades, that will displease them, right? It will not please them, and it will cause them displeasure. Again, we tack on our U-R-E suffix, we drop our silent E. Enclosure, that is also a noun, right? And enclosure is anything that encloses a particular space. Right, so um, a toddler um, or a puppy, you might put them in a little enclosure to keep them safe, a little like baby gate area so that they don't get into trouble. You enclose them in that space. Exposure, what's the verb hiding in there? Yeah, expose, right? You have to make sure during those hot summer months that you don't expose your skin to too much direct sunlight, right? You're going to burn. So you have to maybe um, wear a hat, put sunscreen on, right? Use a beach umbrella. But too much exposure to the sun can be a bad thing. Okay. Any more uh, nouns here? I, I see more nouns, but I don't see any that start as a verb. So over here, anything that I underlined in blue is a noun, but it started as a verb. So it went from a verb to a noun, okay? Let's see if we can find some other nouns this week. Um, 
leisure is a noun, right? Leisure is relaxation. So during their, um, in their leisure time, I guess it can also be used as an adjective if you're using it to describe something. But um, during their leisure time, some people go for a walk, some people read a book, some people um, watch TV, right? Um, in your leisure, maybe you like to do one of those things. So that's just your period of relaxation. A manicure is also a noun. A noun. That's when you get your um, fingernails painted. We'll talk about that more in a second. Um, so we're just going to say... We're going to say the uh, finger treatment. It's finger and hand, right? If you go to the salon and you get a manicure, they'll probably, you know, put some nice lotion on your hands. Maybe they'll soak them and then paint your nails and that sort of thing. Um, manure is a noun. Notice that U-R-E pattern changes a little bit. Instead of saying er, it says or. Manure would be cow poop basically, um, or chicken poop, or chicken poop, but it's good for crops. It's got lots of nutrients in it. So some people, um, use manure to cover their vegetable gardens, to fertilize them. A pedicure is also a noun. In, remember I said a manicure, mani means hand, pedi means foot. So a pedicure is a foot treatment. So you might go to a salon and get your feet soaked. Maybe they rub off some dead skin. They paint your nails. All that could be done at a pedicure. Pressure can be a noun, right? Pressure could be something we feel if somebody's pushing that causes pressure. Or we could have internal pressure if, we feel, if we're trying really hard um, to get all of our work done or to, to be the best. We might feel that pushing inside. So that's a noun. A procedure is a noun. That's a set of steps. So sometimes people have to go to the hospital to have a medical procedure done. There's a bunch of steps the doctor's going to follow. Um, if you're going to change the oil in your car, you have to follow a procedure. Right? If you're going to divide big numbers, you have to follow a procedure. It's just a set of steps. Um, a seizure is a noun. That's a medical condition. Um, people who have epilepsy sometimes have seizures. Um, there have been cases where kids have, like, they spike a really, really high fever and then they have a seizure. So that's um, a, a medical condition in the body. Okay, so you'll notice some of our words this week are, are nouns that started as verbs. And then some of them are nouns that don't have a verb form, okay? In addition to all of that, we also have some verbs this week. So to assure someone is to, to tell them, you know what, everything's going to be okay. Tell someone everything's okay. So if we get in the car and my mom says, oh no, did I remember to turn off the stove? I can assure her, yep, mom, it's fine. It's turned off, right? I can reassure her if she's like, no, 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 I'm not sure. I think we need to go back and check. I can say, no, mom, I checked right? Notice that reassure is the same thing, except it's got this prefix re, which means to do, go back and do it again. So first you assure someone everything's fine, and then you reassure them, okay? Um, to configure something, that's a verb. You have to, when you get a new phone, you have to configure it, right? You have to load up your apps, hook it up to your other devices. So to configure something is to hook, to hook it up. To hook something up, I guess. 
And by the way, we can reconfigure something, right? Right. So let's say your teacher has all your desks in the room and it's not working because these kids are talking and these kids can't see the board. She might have to reconfigure the room. She might have to go back and um, hook everything up differently. Disfigure is a verb. Uh, to disfigure something is to change the shape of something, um, but in a bad way. So if somebody gets into a car accident or um, they're in a fire, that those injuries might disfigure their shape. So to ch it changes the shape of it, but in a bad way, right? Dis. Um, endure. That's a verb. If something endures, it lasts. So it means to last or keep going, right? Um, so some people have had to endure very difficult things in their lives, right? But they just, they kept going, right? They got through it. They endured um, heartache or challenges, right? Um, another word you probably know is endurance, right? If somebody has endurance, they can keep running and running and running without getting tired, right? They can endure um, a three-mile run. Okay, we're still looking for verbs. Assure, configure, disfigure, endure, uh, reassure we talked about. Secure, can be a verb if you secure the house you lock it up you lock something up or make it safe okay so you might hear this when you get on a plane they say okay we're about to take off please secure all your belongings make sure they're tucked under your seat um, or they're in the overhead compartment okay so we secure stuff we lock it up uh, I think that's it for verbs so anything in red is a verb. And then um, I'm going to have to go back and use orange again. Uh, the words that we have left are adjectives. So remember, those are our describing words. So insecure. You know what it means if someone is secure, right? We talked about secure here. We said that it's a verb, but it can also be an adjective. So if our belongings are secure in the overhead compartment, they're not going to fall on us, right? So objects can be secure. People can be secure, right? We try to, um, when we have babies, we try to make them feel safe and secure. We give them lots of hugs. We meet their needs, right? Your parents want you to feel secure. So to feel secure means to feel safe, right? The opposite of that is insecure because if you're feeling insecure, you're not feeling safe, right? So maybe you're not going to raise your hand because you're not feeling safe and you're worried people will laugh if you ask a silly question, right? Maybe you're not going to go talk to someone because you're feeling insecure and you're not sure that person will be friendly towards you. So if you're insecure, you're not feeling safe. All right, we're still looking for adjectives. And I think uh, we talked about leisure, how that could maybe be an adjective sometimes. Um, the last one is unsure. If you're sure about something, you're confident, right? You know it's going to happen or you know it's right. So if you're unsure, that just means you're not sure, right? Uh, maybe, I think so. I think that's what it means. Those are unsure feelings. Okay, so we have ADJ which represents our adjectives. So like I said, a real mixed bag this week, lots of great words, um, lots of prefixes. If you're forgetting what a word means, use that prefix to see if that can help you, okay? Very quickly, the last thing I wanna talk about 
is I want to go back to Manny and Petty because when you go back to page 146, you're going to find out that the Latin root man means hand and the Latin root ped means foot. And we have lots and lots of words in our language that contain man or pet. Manicure, pedicure. Uh, if you do something manually, you do it by hand, right? A manuscript is something in the olden days it was written by hand. Now people type it. Um, if we think about ped, we think about pedestrians. Those are people who travel by foot. Um, if we think about a pedal on um, our bike, that's something we push with our foot. So on this page, we've got a bunch of great words. Try to match them with their definitions. Just like I said earlier, use your knowledge of prefixes and suffixes to match them up. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Good luck, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.